This is the chapter on complementary and integrative health. Make sure to review the key terms in this chapter as many of these concepts may be new to you. Here are your learning objectives. Take a moment and review these. Complementary health approaches are also referred to as CHA. CHA can be used with traditional medical interventions. Integrated health or integrated health or IH is the approach of combining complementary and conventional health approaches together in a coordinated effort. Complementary and alternative medicine or CAM is still widely used, but the terminology changed to remove the word medicine because you do not need to have a medical degree to practice CHA or IH. CHA and IH is something nurses will see and work with with their patients. Patients expect their nurse to be knowledgeable about this practice so they can support and assist their patients with performing these therapies and possibly include them in a patient's plan of care. Nurses also have to be aware of any possible harmful outcomes of any possible CHA or IH therapies. And lastly, many state boards of nursing recognize CHA and IH as part of our current nursing practice. Patients and family members may expect nurses to administer herbal preparations, nutritional supplements. Many institutions now provide complementary therapies to inpatients as part of total patient care to provide integrative health care during times of illness. I can tell you personally that when I was seeking um, treatment at MD Anderson, they provided complementary therapies um, such as, um, um, what are those, oil, essential oil therapy, I had acupuncture, I had cognitive behavioral therapy, all kinds of things. So yes, we do that um, for our patients. And we need to be familiar with the difference between all these different therapies. So CHA refers to interventions that can be used with conventional medical interventions and thus complement them. The term integrative health refers to the combination of complementary health and conventional health approaches in a coordinated way. If there is a non-mainstream practice that is used instead of conventional medical care, it is considered an alternative modality. However, it is rare that people use only alternative approaches. CHA and IH are not medicines, and people without medical degrees can practice CHA and or IH. Allopathic medicine is the treatment of symptoms and diseases using drugs, radiation, or surgery. Holism is the theory and philosophy that focuses on connections and interactions between parts of the whole. Holistic nursing is the practice built on a holistic philosophy. Healing the whole person is the goal. Integrative healthcare is a combination of allopathic and complementary and alternative modalities. This slide has a good description of what CHA is and the beliefs that surround it and support it. Pause and take a moment to review this. Allopathic medicine or Western medicine so no, those terms are interchangeable, has been around for about 100 years. It has had great advances in surgery and biotechnology, but it does little for chronic illness. It looks at curing or eliminating the disease, but does not look at the person holistically. Holism believes in connections of parts to form a whole. Holism has been a predominant belief throughout history. When sickness strikes, this belief feels that the whole person is affected, not just where this, the um, symptoms manifest. Holism believes that the mind, body, emotions, and spirit are all connected to form a whole person. Holistic nursing goal. Holistic nursing's goal is to heal the whole person. Holistic nurses 
often add CHA to their practice or incorporate it into their lives. Integrative care uses a combination of allopathic medicine and CHA. Your book lists examples of how this is done treating the common cold. Take a moment and review it. I bet you already do a lot of these things yourselves. Things like meditation, stress reduction, massage and imagery are all practices that can help support the be and benefit our patients. Seeking ways to improve health and well-being or relieve symptoms associated with chronic, even terminal illnesses or the side effects of conventional treatments for them. Having a holistic health philosophy or a transformational experience that changes one's worldview and wanting greater control over one's own health. Those are reasons we use complementary health approaches. About 38% of adults in the U.S. use some form of CHA. CHA is more prevalent in women. I feel like probably healthcare in general is more prevalent in women. And Adults age 30 to 69 with higher levels of education, people financially well off, people living in the West, former smokers, and adults who were recently hospitalized. Very few people, however, discuss the use of CHA with their healthcare provider. People use CHA for a variety of reasons. It can be to improve health or resolve symptoms or wanting to control one's own health. The most frequently used CHA includes the use of natural products deep breathing exercises, meditation, chiropractic care, and yoga. For children, the most frequently used CHA is natural products. CHA has grown to be big business. Americans have spent over $30 billion a year on CHA products and therapies. The National Center for Complementary and Alternative Medicine was developed to deal with CHA and informing the public to make informed decisions when going to purchase CHA products and services. The three CHA categories include mind-body therapies, natural products, and other therapies. We will go into these in detail in the upcoming slides. A wide variety of alternative health practices are available. Most require advanced training and often certification. Your book goes over examples of treating pain with all these different therapies. When you are done with the PowerPoint voiceover, go back to that and look at those examples. Mind-body interventions are based on awareness of the mind and body being interconnected and that social, familial, and economic factors will affect one's health. Relaxation promotes parasympathetic activity to reduce sympathetic activity and balance in the body. This includes mindful breathing, repeated phrases, and meditation. Meditation uses practices that help to quiet and focus the mind and induce relaxation. Two major forms, concentration meditation and mindfulness meditation, are distinguished by their relationship to the object of meditation. In concentration meditation, the focus is on the breath, a sound or a mantra, or an object, for example, a flower. Mindfulness meditation involves directing attention to thoughts, feelings, and sensations, opening up to all stimuli. Imagery or visualization uses the imagination to create a desired event or scenario. A successful visualization incorporates all of the senses. Most frequently used complementary health approaches um, this just breaks out. I'm not going to read you the slide. You can read it. So these are the ones we most frequently use. Um, let's see. Yep, I don't need to read that to you. Whoopsie. I think I just moved my slide, darn it. Hold on, let me move it back. There we go. Yoga is a mind and body practice. The ultimate goal of yoga is to awaken spiritual identity and experience peace and happiness. Some types of yoga have been found to be useful for chronic pain. It consists of 
various physical poses and breathing to promote strength and flexibility, increase endurance, promote relaxation, and decrease the response to stress. Yoga can be used throughout the lifespan. The different types of yoga offered are listed on this slide. Take a moment and review and compare the different types. Actually, there's many more than this. Many more. And we have a lot of them here on campus. So if you ever need to do something to decrease your stress level, great idea is to take one of these classes. I did one in nursing school. It was super helpful. Uh, Hui Gong and Tai Chi, I hope I said that right, is a system of postures, exercises, breathing techniques, and visualization that regulate the, the Qi. They are designed to restore the healing system. Tai Chi is a martial art, mind-body practice, which can be used to promote balance and coordination. Acupuncture is based on TCM. Acupuncture is the penetration of the skin with thin metallic needles to stimulate anatomical structures of the body. Energy is believed to travel through the body along channels known as meridians. The acupuncturist selects acupoints based on examination of the patient's pulses, appearance, tongue color, odors, and complaints. Stimulation of these points restores the flow of energy along the meridians. Acupuncture either increases or decreases the flow of energy along the meridian, restoring the balance of yin and yang. This change in the flow of energy contributes to healing. Chiropractic medicine focuses on the relationship between the body's structure, mainly the spine, and its functioning. They primarily form adjustments to the spine. I don't think that's form. They perform adjustments to the spine or other parts of the body with the goal of correcting alignment problems, alleviating pain, improving function, and supporting the body's natural healing. The premise of chiropractic is that disease is caused by irritation of the nervous system. A total of 31 pairs of spinal nerves branch off the spinal cord to innervate all the organs in the body. Subluxion, which is loss of proper position or motion in a joint of the vertebrae, impinges on these nerves and leads to disease. Manipulation of body structures, especially the spinal column, realigns the vertebrae to allow nerve impulses to flow without interruption, thereby improving health. They will use heat and ice, electrical stimulation, relaxation techniques, promote exercise, provide counseling regarding diet and weight loss, and provide dietary supplements. And actually, they'll also provide uh, topical, topical pain relievers that are non, you know, over the counter. They do a lot of that. And they also many times have um, massage therapists on site. Aromatherapy uses essential oils of plants to improve physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being. The fragrance is thought to affect the limbic system in the brain. And I can tell you that when I underwent my treatments and they used essential oils, there's research to show that um, there's something in the nose that is so close to the brain, they're thinking of calling it part of the brain. So um, I feel like there is some good research out there to support this. The fragrance is thought to affect the limbic system of the brain where emotions are stored. Some have found to have, oh, yes, they have. Some oils have been found to have antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal, calming and energizing effects. I'm just going to tell you that I had chickens. I used to raise chickens. Y'all know I'm a farmer at heart. And my chickens got this white mold all over them during a really rainy season one winter. And I mixed together three different essential oils, one of which was valerian, I think. One was um, frankincense, and I don't remember the third one. It didn't smell very good, but I sprayed that on my chickens and it cured it within a couple of days. Um, common ones that we use in healthcare are peppermint. Okay, it says peppermint. Oh, yes, this wording is killing me. 
Um, so peppermint is supposed to improve nausea. It can also help with headaches. I will just say that. It doesn't work for me. It actually makes me more nauseous. Um, lavender is used for insomnia. It can also have calming properties. You're supposed to be certified in order to use aromatherapy with your patients. I feel like that's not always the case because we do add um, essential oils to sprays that we use in the rooms and we might put a few drops of lavender oil in lotion to help promote sleep. So it says you must be certified though. Uh, benefits of relaxation for, for your patients. It reduces anxiety. I think you can read this. Yeah, you sure can. Those are the benefits. Energy therapies involve the use of energy fields. Biofield therapies affect the energy that surrounds and penetrates the body. These include therapeutic touch, healing touch, and sound healing. Um, have you guys ever watched or listened to those different frequencies? I don't know what they're called, but you can find them on Instagram. Those are so cool. And it's just different frequencies of sound that are supposed to have different healing properties. Um, I actually find they're pretty, pretty awesome. Um, the other thing, I have a friend who does the Reiki. I'm not sure if that's how you say it, but um, I know people swear by that and that is not even touching. It is, um, like your hands are above the body. It's amazing. Some of the things that we have found actually work for people. Uh, therapeutic touch of biofield therapy uses the hands on or near the body to provide comfort, pain relief, and healing. The premise of Therapeutic touch is that humans consist of energy fields and, uh, that penetrate the body and extend 5 to 15 centimeters or 2 to 6 inches beyond the physical structure of the body. In health, energy flows freely through the system in a balanced manner. But in illness or pain, the free flow of energy is disrupted. The therapeutic touch practitioner's hands clear, energize, repattern, and balance the energy field to produce a more healthful state. Therapeutic touch is non-invasive and it can be used as primary or adjunctive treatment in many settings with clients of any age and for a variety of conditions. Healing touch or HT has a goal of restoring wholeness through harmony and balance. It is a non it is non-invasive and has proven effective non-toxic and economical benefits. Sound, healing, or music therapy can be used to promote healing and well-being. Music therapy can be designed to promote wellness, release emotions, manage stress, relieve pain, improve communication, and promote physical rehabilitation. Oh, Lordy, I am not going to be able to say this. Ayurveda, I have no idea. I'm not going to say the word. I'll just say that word. Originated in Vedic civilization of India, one of the world's large, oldest medical systems. The aim of this medicine is to integrate and balance the body mind and spirit. Key concepts include universal interconnectedness among people, their health, and the universe, and the body's constitution and life forces. These practitioners prescribe individualized treatments that include herbs, metals, minerals, and other materials, diet and exercise, and lifestyle recommendations. Manipulative and body-based practices include therapeutic massage and other treatments that would involve manipulation of soft tissues of the body. The goal is to break up tension held in body structures. The benefits are listed on this slide. Take a moment and review them. You need specialized training to perform these treatments. That I agree with. And I now want to go get a massage. Biologically based therapies use things found in nature like food, herbs, vitamins, and aromas. 
Dietary therapies are used in traditional healthcare as well as with CHA. For example, a low sodium diet is part of the treatment plan for patients with hypertension. Dietary modifications may also be part of the treatment in alternative health systems. For example, in Ayurvedic medicine, a patient with a pita dosha is represented by the element of fire. Foods that are cool in nature are recommended to balance the patient's fiery nature. Consumers state their primary reason for using herbal supplements is to promote overall health and wellness. However, they also report using them to improve performance and energy, treat and prevent illnesses, for example, colds and flu, and to alleviate depression. There are risks associated with the use of herbal products. These are listed they are listed as dietary supplements, so they are not regulated as closely by the FDA as medications. Also, they oftentimes interact with prescription medications and they can be toxic. Non-herbal dietary supplements are not plant products. Examples include hormones, probiotics, vitamins, and minerals. These include bioidentical hormones, which are chemically compounded and can only be given by prescription. Probiotics are live bacteria or yeasts that have health benefits. Vitamins and minerals are widely used. Other products include fish oil, honey, and melatonin. Oh, we're back to that word again. Uh, Ayurveda is one of the world's oldest medical systems. I feel like I just said this all. Ayurveda attributes health to balance between three forces, creation, preservation, and destruction. Imbalance between these forces leads to illness and disease. This belief encompasses that humans have a physical and psychological constitution made up of these three forces. This constitution is known as a dosha. The ideal dosha is vada, kapha, pita in equal proportions. Imbalances may be caused by age, lifestyle, diet, too much or too little physical exertion, the seasons or inadequate protection from weather, chemicals, or germs. Ayurvedic remedies contain herbs, metals, minerals, and spices, along with color and sound therapy and aromatherapy. In traditional Chinese medicine, or TCM, practitioners consider that each person has his or her own balance of yin and yang energies. They are complementary but opposing life forces. And the five elements of earth, water, wood, fire, and air and air slash metal. If these balances are disturbed, ill health will result. Each element is associated with specific characteristics such as color, smell, flavor, sound, and so on. The slide lists the rest of the components. Take a moment and read through it. Shamanism has been the most widely used medical system on earth. Illnesses and other forms of distress are thought to originate in the spiritual world. The shaman or medicine man has the ability to access the spirit world to return with information to treat the ailment. This might involve plants and herbs, animals, rituals, ceremonies, and purification techniques. Homeo homeopathy is based on an understanding of how the body heals itself and an acceptance that all symptoms represent the body's attempt to restore itself to health. The practice of homeopathy is based on the following three principles. The law of similars, or like cures like. The law of minimum dose and the single remedy. Uh, naturopathy is a system of healing based on the healing power of nature. Health is the outcome of understanding nature and allowing the body to heal itself. Diseases and aging result from ignoring the laws of nature. Natural paths believe that health is a dynamic state of being that provides abundant energy for people to deal with life 
in our complex society. Naturopathic practitioners use many different treatment approaches, including dietary and lifestyle changes, stress reduction, herbs and other dietary supplements, manipulative therapies, and practitioner-guided detoxification, botanicals and nutritional supplements, and nutrition therapy. Nurses have an opportunity to expand their practice to meet their patients' holistic or alternative therapy needs as a means to promote health. Patient education on CHA is an essential skill for the nurse to obtain. There are numerous resources out there for the nurse to explore. Go to focused assessment on holistic care to start learning what factors you can assess and what kinds of questions you can ask as a nurse regarding holistic care. This is the end of the chapter.